so far we have been discussing an uh, equality and merging because of equality introduction and merging when you have a backtracking however uh, the disequality may appear anytime and in the example we showed it to appear very at the end and this may not be the actual uh, situation it can come in the start or somewhere in the middle so how do we handle disequalities uh, in our uh, in our data structure uh, for each equivalence class we maintain a set of the other mergeable class each time you say that the term t is not equal to uh, term let's say s so wherever t and s are those equivalence classes cannot be merged together so for in t you remember the uh, list of classes where s uh, uh, cannot be merged and in s you also maintain another list okay uh, this is not an equivalence class. Uh, you, it's, it's for each class. You need to remember the list of other classes. You cannot be merged. Just, just not by nature. It's not an equivalence class. The set is maintained in the list for which we need extra memory. Uh, so since we for each node we are maintaining a list, it's not a finite amount of uh, about of information. And so you cannot put that as a, as a field within a node. You need to have a, a sort of another linked list which uh, which maintains the list of classes that are, are unmergeable with the with the class you're concerned with so for every disequality it creates two entries and which one entry which goes into one class and one entry goes to another class so for num you have n disequalities you have uh, two n entries so furthermore in some uh, sometimes we have this kind of constraints that means is that uh, the these terms t1 to tn are distinct from each other. They, none of them can be equal to each other. If that is the constraint you want to express uh, and turn into a pairwise disequalities, it creates a quadratically many disequalities. And that is a, is a huge cost uh, in, in adding, adding such constraint into our system. So there is a better way of doing it. Sometimes you have, let's say n is large, let's say n is greater than 100, then you need to have a how many uh, hundred square probably disequalities to be added probably less than that but uh, to get the point so there is a better way of doing it and that's how you do it for every node you create a bit vectors and every distinct constraints and give it a bit position let's say you call it ith position and this equivalence class has this bit vector and this another equivalence class has this bit vector and t1 lives here then t2 lives here so then you set one and one here and let's suppose here none of them t1 to t1 lives there so then you say that bit is set to zero so you know that whenever they have one in a same place you cannot merge them if they have not they don't have one at the same place then you can merge them and therefore you can have a easily repre represent this distinct constraint but this creates another problem that if you have a more if you have a lot of this distinct constraint and this this bit vector length keep increasing so typically what happens is that uh, they maintain a 64 bit length this bit number of uh, bit vector in in your in your node and uh, you hope that you don't have more than the, the, that many distincts if you get more of those distincts then you can go for the binary encoding as we have suggested earlier 